What's up guys, I'm Glenn and welcome to DIY Creators. Last video I built this cabinet here, big storage at the top and also a massive drawer at the bottom. Probably my favorite feature of the entire build. In this video, I'm gonna continue that, finish up the cabinets on this wall and also add storage along the top. Other than that, let's do this. If you've been around long enough, you know I've been very willing to pull out my circular saw and make some of these cuts and build from just that. Because I'm doing all of the planning, filming, editing, and building and so on, it takes a lot of time. But this is one way I can work more efficiently and get things done a bit faster. At the end of the day, my goal is to build things and inspire you to make. My point is, you can get by without a table saw. Now that I have all the parts cut, I'm gonna start building the frame for the upper cabinet. I drill pocket holes in the plywood for the bottom and the top panel. Before putting the two together, I apply wood glue to the joint. Now as this is coming together, I can put the last panel on to close up the frame. Before I set this off to the side, I'll add the back panels. This is gonna allow me to attach the cabinets to the wall. At times I prefer to work on the floor, but sometimes I like to work on top of the workbench, so if I'm feeling a bit froggy, I jump up. As far as I'm concerned, this is allowed. Now I can get started with building the lower cabinet At this point, I have the sides and bottom joined together. Now I'll attach the top. Adding the top and bottom panel to the back of the cabinet not only provide a mounting surface, but also help keep the frame squared. The lower cabinet will have a total of four drawers and two different sizes. At some point, I'll be painting the cabinet, so the grain direction in the plywood is not a big factor for me. So at this point, I'm trying to avoid cutting into a new sheet of plywood while using all of the existing cutoffs. To build the drawers, I'm gonna use a series of rabbit joinery. I'm using the router table for this, but you can totally use a router by hand and a guide. You can also use a table saw. I've shown videos in the past on how to do this with a circular saw and you can do this with a miter saw as well. Since the drawer has four parts to make up the drawer frame, I only did the front and the back panel. The side panels will sit within the rabbit joints. Now I'll make another rabbit joint, but this will be along the length of the board. And this should be done on all four parts. The quarter inch sheet of plywood will rest in this rabbit joint. I ripped down a quarter inch sheet of plywood for the drawer bottom. Now all I need to do here is sand off the raised fibers on the plywood edge. Before the final assembly, I double checked and triple checked that all the drawers fit together nicely and they were squared by performing a dry fit first. Once I felt good about where I'm at, I laid out everything as if the drawer is going to be assembled then I fill the joints with wood glue and put the parts together. If you notice, I'll assemble this with the bottom of the drawer facing up. Now I'll run wood glue in the joint and spread it out. Now I'll place the quarter inch sheet of plywood within the drawer bottom. And to tighten that up, I use the band clamp. I look for any excessive wood glue, clean that up, and then double check for squaring.
All of the drawers are designed this way even though the other ones are a bit smaller, it's the same steps. Drawer slides can get really costly on a project, especially if you're using a lot of them. So if you're looking to keep the cost down and you want to cut back on something, building your own wooden drawer tracks would be a way to go. You may not have the smooth movement and the soft closing feature, but I made some for my older cabinets and they worked out great. The drawers will be recessed into the cabinet frame, so I have to keep that in mind as I'm setting the drawer slides. After that, I can secure the slide to the frame and then to the drawer. Right now I have all the drawers mounted in here and I adjusted the measurements that I had in my design and I think I'm going to adjust this top drawer, lower it a bit and then add an even smaller drawer at the top, but that's gonna be a future add-on. I'm thinking instead of a drawer, more like a shelf that pulls out that you can place loose hand tools on it temporarily. So now I need to mount this cabinet and just like the other side, I need to remove a section of the baseboard. It may be my luck, but just like the other side, only one stud fall in line with the cabinet location. The back of the cabinet will be supported by the wall and also the concrete lip and the front of it will be supported with these adjustable feet. This cabinet required a bit more effort than the first one due to the unevenness of the wall. Just when I thought I had it all worked out, I noticed there was a gap right here in the corner which sort of pushed the top cabinet towards the front and it was throwing everything off. So at this point I had to detach it from the wall, secure the cabinets to each other first, then reattach it to the wall. At this point, everything is leveled and I'm satisfied with where it's set, so I'll go ahead and attach this cabinet to the wall. I don't know if I got lucky or not, but on the first try, somehow these two cabinets managed to be the same height. For now, I'll go ahead and install the drawers and attach the doors. I closed up the back of the cabinet by installing a quarter inch sheet of plywood. I nailed the trim on so I can cover up the space below the doors. Once this is in place, I'll use it to set the spacing between the drawers. Now I'll tape a piece of eighth inch material to the bottom of that trim. This is where I can set the spacing of the gap. I also did it on the side setting the spacing there and also used a double sided tape on the front of the drawer. Now I can take the drawer cover, sit it in place, it should attach to the tape, pull the drawer out and now I can screw it from the inside. Now I repeat that same method over again until I get to the final drawer. Now I could have started from the bottom and worked my way up which would have been easier but I didn't want to chance it, fearing that if I work my way from the bottom up by the time I get to the trim my gap may be too small or too big. Doing it this way, no matter what happened at the bottom, it won't be as noticeable. Since I already made a drill guide for the handles, drilling the holes should be quick. When it comes to the drawers, I'll just find the center of them and place a mark there. The drill guide I have lined up to the inner edge of the door. Clamp the guide in place and drill the holes. On the guide, I have a line marked as the center. All I need to do here is line it up to the line that I previously marked and drill the holes. I repeated that for all of the drawers and then it was onto the fun part and that's adding the handles.
Now I need to build a bridge between the two cabinets so I can store bins on the top. To build this overhead storage, I cut down a sheet of plywood that would fit this space perfectly. I attached the strips around the plywood using wood glue and nails. Now that the plywood is framed, I'll attach a couple more pieces on the inside. I'll leave the middle section open for now in case a light is needed in the future. Now I'll add a piece of trim along the front of this to cover up the end grain from the other plywood. When you work alone, you gotta always think of little tricks that's gonna help you along the way. So I'll temporarily attach this piece of wood with a clamp with the lip hanging over so when I sit this in place on top of the two cabinets, it should sit while I secure it with very little effort on my part. Now I'll drive a few screws through this and into the cabinet. I also do this on the other side and along the back wall, I'll drive a few screws through this and into the studs. The other side has fixed shelves for designated items. This side will be a bit more flexible and to do that, I'm gonna use this jig to drill holes from the bottom all the way up to the top. Now I can easily adjust the shelf pins to adjust the shelves. With so many holes to drill, I didn't wanna drill a bad hole, so what I did was taped over one set of the holes and just left the ones open that I planned to drill. I like the shelves to have a thick look to it when I'm done, so I'll replicate what I did on the other side. All right guys, so that is it. The wall is semi-complete. For now, I'll give you a look at the shop in its current state. So let's take a look at this space in its current state. Doing away with a few things and adding some key elements to the space can totally transform the look. While this transformation is not complete, some huge strides has been made. A key addition to the space is adding overhead storage. And to take advantage of that space, I want to heavy duty storage containers. These are very durable and impact resistant, plus they're waterproof and dustproof. The coolest thing about these containers is you can take the lids off completely or you can use the hinge feature. So in this corner, I have Husky's air compressor. Now compared to the other one I have, it's supposed to be 80% quieter. I'm not sure it's 80%, but it's way quieter in my opinion. So the main reason for the compressor is because I wanna try out this paint set. I'm really hoping to get some fine finish with that. So once I get everything sanded down and prepped and ready to go, I'm definitely gonna give this a try and let you guys know what I think about it. So fingers crossed. The large space in between the cabinets was left for the 72 inch tool chest. I could have made the space a bit tighter, but I needed clearance for the wheels to swivel when pushing it in and pulling it out. Aside from the cabinets, this tool chest add an additional 15 drawers in this space, so it should take a while to fill all this out. This is all of what's left, so I'll take some time to figure this space out and freshen it up. I'm going for a minimal look in here, so if you have some really cool ideas, let me know down in the comments. 